Oh, should you get your own cable modem? Good question to ask. Personally, I've always owned my own cable modem, as I tend to have lots of cable modems laying around, because it's kind of my industry. But I also don't like paying a monthly fee for a cable modem, because cable modems are not that expensive. You can buy them on Amazon, you can buy them on eBay, you can buy them at Walmart, Target, lots of places. But just paying that monthly fee is maybe not the only reason you want to have your cable modem. Cable modems can get old, and if you're paying a monthly fee, you may not be getting an updated cable modem every couple of years from your cable operator. The DOCSIS specifications do get updated every few years, and currently we're on DOCSIS 3.1 of the DOCSIS specification. That just means there's more features that have been added, there's more speed capability. With DOCSIS 3.1, we can get up to a gigabit per second to our cable modem. Now, this cable modem I got here is a Netgear CM1000. It does say it's supported by Xfinity, by Spectrum, by Cox, but there's a lot of other cable operators out there and they may not be one of your providers. They may not be your cable operator provider. So there are some things that you need to take into consideration before you run out and get your own cable modem. First, contact your cable operator and ask them if you even can get your own cable modem on their system. Some cable operators out there will not allow you to get your own cable modem and operate your own cable modem in their system. And there's really valid reasons for that. Just like Windows or a Mac operating system, a Linux operating system, those companies create regular security updates, software updates, and they push that out to their to your systems. Like, you're very familiar with getting these Windows updates. A lot of those contain security patches. The very same is true of cable modems. Cable modems frequently get security patches to make sure we're fixing the bugs and security holes in the cable modems that hackers are trying to use to get in and basically hack your own home network. So one of the reasons that cable operators may say, look, we can't support you getting your own cable modem is because they may not have the necessary infrastructure to support the many, many different varieties of cable modems out there. And so they say, you know, we're, we can... With our infrastructure, we can support just a couple of different types of cable modems to make sure that they get regular firmware security updates to make sure that both you as the customer are secure and also the cable operator network is secure. Both have to be secure to make sure that no one gets hacked. Once you find out that your, that your cable operator allows you to get a cable modem, Find out if there's any limitations, like they may say you can only get a certain type of cable modem. If you can get any type of cable modem, then you'll start looking at so what type of cable modem do I want to get. My recommendation to you, if it's unlimited to what cable modems, right now you want to make sure that you get the latest specification cable modem, which is DOCSIS 3.1. So you can do your Googling and limit all your search results to getting DOCSIS 3.1 cable modems. That's going to be make sure, one, that you're future-proofed. If your cable operator is supporting the DOCSIS 3.1 spec and they are transporting or delivering to your home DOCSIS 3.1 signals, then your cable modem is going to support those signals. It'll lock onto them and then give you the best performance that you can get on a DOCSIS 3.1 network. If your cable operator is not currently providing DOCSIS 3.1 signals, a DOCSIS 3.1 cable modem will perform better than a DOCSIS 3.0 cable modem simply because the hardware in DOCSIS 3.1 cable modems are better. They have better chipsets, better receivers, better transmitters. Fundamentally, anything, everything in a DOCSIS 3.1 cable modem is better than a DOCSIS 3.0 cable modem, and that's why you'll see the prices for DOCSIS 3.0 cable modems are way cheaper than DOCSIS 3.1 cable modems. So it may be alluring to want to buy a 3.0 cable modem, but 
you're really not making a good investment because a year or two from now, your cable operator that may not be running DOCSIS 3.1 signals will be running them. And then you're just going to be spending more money later on and buying that 3.1 cable modem so you can get better performance out of it. Another thing that you want to look for is the brand. So not all cable modems are the same. I will be doing more evaluations on cable modems moving forward. Uh, the Netgear CM1000 is the first brand that I'm doing a evaluation on right now. And the reason that I picked the Netgear through, uh, CM1000 is a uh, CM1000 ultra high speed DOCSIS 3.1 up to six gigabits per second. A lot of marketing hype there. Really, all you'll be able to achieve from any cable operator is up to a gigabit per second speed at this time because that's the fastest download speeds that any cable operator is providing, one gigabit per second. Another thing you want to look at when you're getting cable modems is whether or not you want Wi-Fi built into the cable modem or Wi-Fi external from the cable modem. I personally don't like Wi-Fi as part of my cable modem. I like it completely external. The reason for that is I like to have the ability to expand my Wi-Fi network. If you get Wi-Fi built in the modem, that can be really helpful if you're in a small apartment. You don't have a lot of room. You just, have, you know, fundamentally, you're in a small apartment. The Wi-Fi in your modem's completely going to cover the apartment. Then getting Wi-Fi in a modem might be right for you. As soon as you get into anything larger than a small apartment, you start getting into a house with multiple rooms, you're going to probably find out very quickly that just having a single access point is going to cause you to have dark spots or sp spots in your house where you have weak signal strength. That means that you're going to end up turning off the access point that's in the modem and starting to put other access points around your house, or you're going to start looking at using a mesh network, which is basically multiple Wi-Fi points that are intelligent and communicate with each other. So when you buy a modem with an access point built in, you're paying more money for that modem, and then you're not going to be using that access point. Another thing which should be understood, but I just want to throw it out there as a public service announcement, never plug your computer directly into the Ethernet port of the modem unless you're doing that just for testing purposes or setting the modem up. Um, as I've talked in the last video, which I'll point put a link to and point up in the video here when I talked about using the interfaces on the modem where you can log in and look at the diagnostic pages. Uh, I, I also talked about this spectrum analyzer that's built into the modem. And the main reason I got this CM1000 is it has an enhanced spectrum analyzer. Instead of just being able to see the downstream signals, I can also see the upstream signals, any noise that's in my house in the upstream, that 5 megahertz to 42 megahertz range or 5 to 85 megahertz range. That helps the cable operator as well because a big problem the cable operators have is if there's any noise in my house that's getting into the cable operator's network, that goes all the way back to the cable operator's head end, and, and it can impact not only my cable modem, but also my neighbor's cable modems. So having that return spectrum analyzer in here not only gives me visibility into noise that could be in my network, but gives a cable operator visibility into noise that could be coming from my network, my neighbor's network, and that's a lot of extra troubleshooting power built into this modem. So I'm getting a modem that's DOCSIS 3.1, it's future-proof, it has advanced troubleshooting capabilities that can help me and also the cable operator. So again, when we're in a time that, you know, maybe I don't want a technician coming into my house, they have the ability to remotely see that noise and troubleshoot that noise, which is a benefit for me and also a benefit for the cable operator. So a few reasons. You may want to get your own cable modem. You don't want to pay the monthly fees. You want to get a better performing cable modem than the one you already have. You may have a DOCSIS 2.0 modem or a DOCSIS 3.0 modem. A 3.1 modem is going to give you way better performance than any modem that you currently have that's an older version of DOCSIS. And then again, 
Don't get a modem that has Wi-Fi inside if you're in anything other than apartment. I like Wi-Fi external because then I have control over that. Don't plug your computer into the cable modem. Make sure you have a firewall that your modem's plugged into. That's just going to be an external router, maybe a Linksys router, something like that. Uh, if you really want to go high end on your firewall, go PFSense. I've talked about that in previous videos as well. Otherwise, I think that's it. I'll be doing some future videos and testing on modems as well. I'll be doing some videos on how the pages in this work, uh, the internal troubleshooting pages, so we can see how the spectrum analyzer in this modem works. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. I'm Brady Volp, founder of the Volp Firm and Nimble This. I have nearly 30 years experience in the broadband and cable modem industry. I'm here to provide education and not clickbait. If you like the content, please do hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell if you want to be notified of upcoming videos on related content.